You've tuned into another edition of The Break Room, a weekly conversation about how the city of St. Augustine works from those who do the work every day. Hosted by the city of St. Augustine's communications director, Melissa Whistle, The Break Room offers a closer look at the different city departments and provides updates on current and upcoming projects and events. And now your host, Melissa Whistle. Welcome to The Break Room. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Melissa Whistle, communications director for the city of St. Augustine. This week in the break room, we're talking with St. Augustine Police Department's Accreditation Manager, Jennifer Smalls. Jennifer joined the department in February of 2019 and was charged with the daunting responsibility of completing the accreditation process for the police department. Jennifer, welcome to the break room. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so great to meet you. Uh, We've heard so much about accreditation. Uh, It was a huge undertaking. There was lots of time and effort, not just from you as the accreditation manager, a lot of involvement, support, participation from the department. How, How did it go? Tell us all about it. So, um, like you said, I started in 2019. So when I came, um, they had they were prepared and ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as the policies, most of those policies were already in pre- place. Um, Commander McCauley had done a lot of the work. Okay. And so it was just, uh, with the policies, it was just some tweaking. So we had several meetings where we went over each and every policy in the police department oh, wow. and to make sure that they were in compliance with the state standards, which is one of the main things. Your policies have to be in compliance with the state standards. So is that like going through the book with a fine tooth going comb? Going through the book with a fine tooth <laughs> comb and making sure all the I's are dotted and mm-hmm. the T's are crossed. Mm-hmm. So um, like I said, they were ready. A lot of support from the team, mm-hmm. really a lot of support from the city, from um, the city managers, commissioners. Everybody was excited and everybody was ready to get this done. Because from what I understand, we really were a an, a, a policy abiding agency. We just hadn't gotten that official stamp of approval. Right. There wasn't. We were already functioning um, mm-hmm. as an accredited agency. So we just needed to go the last mile of the way and, like you said, get the stamp. And it took the two years. Is it a cycle that we had to wait a certain period of time? How does that work? So initially, when you apply for accreditation, you have two years to complete the process. So that's two years to do your self-assessment, get all your policies in order, and get your files together. The files consist of, of course, your policies, but you also have to provide documentation. You have to show proof that you're actually doing what the policies say you're doing. Okay, so show us how you fill out a report. Right, so um, they may ask you for a towing report. When you tow a car, um, let's see your report. Are you, do you try to contact the owner? Um, you have to show that, yes, we did try to contact this owner. And what happened when you contacted the owner? You have to also um, do inventory of that car when you tow it. So what's in the car, makeup? you know, purse, whatever, you have to log all that information and you have to say exactly where you had the car towed to. So, you you know, you're giving them the full story. So you have to show that in your report you've covered all these areas. So I'm just going to say on the side, I didn't know that if I get my car towed, which I don't, (laughs) You actually can look in my windows and do an inventory of my car. Good thing I keep my car clean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're going to do an inventory. Okay. And they're going to go through because you may say that when you left your car, you left oh. a certain item in there and the item was missing. Now you're going to say, yeah. oh, I've left a really nice watch in yes. the back seat of my car. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. And so the two years, you came February 2019. We had COVID. Right. COVID came along. So our initial plan was because... Um, we get uh, accredited through the CFA, Florida Commission uh, Association, Law Enforcement Association or agency. Mm-hmm. We, um, that's the commission body, the accrediting body. So um, COVID came, but we were preparing to um, be accredited in St. Augustine because they do three conferences okay. where they accredit agencies. Okay. So um, they have a conference here in February, a conference June in Orlando, and a conference coming up October in Pensacola. So they do three conferences a year. So we wanted to go before in our hometown. We wanted to do it in our hometown. um, But of course, COVID came, pushed everything and everybody back. And also it was the 25th anniversary because 
um, they accredited their first um, agency in 1996. So I think it would have been their 25th anniversary here in St. Augustine. And uh, part of that um, initial group of men that put this accrediting agency together was Neil Perry, who is very well known here in St. Augustine. So we thought it would be special to be able to do it here in our hometown in front of our um, committee on right. the twenty our own community. I'm sorry mm-hmm. on the 25th um, anniversary. But however, like we said, COVID came right. and pushed that back. And when you talk about this accreditation process, it's not like we the city just apply and it's our two years. It sounds like there's a a, a pool of agencies that are all accredited, sort of in that cycle. Right. So. Um, and, and now we have to re-accredit. We have to go through a re-accreditation process. So, yeah, in that two-year cycle, like I said, we're doing self-assessments, and then we also bring in a team of people to look at our files to tell us um, if we're ready for the next step, which is the initial assessment, if we're ready or if we need to go back and do certain things. And so we had a great group of people, team working with us. Um, we had a young lady from Palatka, um, Nassau County, And we had a guy from FDLE who is top notch. Um, And so they came in and they went through our files. It's like a dress rehearsal. Right. And they picked it apart, picked it apart, (laughs) picked it apart, Um, which we laughed with Chief Fox because he was always just like, "Uh." but, you know, that's what you wanted to do is (laughs) come in and pick it apart, pick it apart. And then you just put it back together again. And so um, and we went through that. more than once because Mm -hmm. we just really wanted to get it right. Um, And so when we got to our initial actual um, assessment, no problems. No, And and you have to go before a panel? So once we, um, normally in a world outside of COVID, they will come into your agency Mm -hmm. and they'll walk through your agency, um, talk to different people. They just pick people as they're walking down the hall to talk to them. Um, they'll go through the files. They're actually touching your files and everything. But because of COVID, we had to do all that virtual. So um, it was a little bit more work virtual because I had to take a lot of photos mm-hmm. and, you know, to show show some of the things that we did and just photos of the building and photos of doors locked, <laughs> photos of human resources. And this is where they keep the files and they see that this file cabinet is locked. Um, and then we had to do videos. Right. Because they weren't here to actually see right for themselves so um we did videos showing our special vehicles like our boat our four by four um showing that the horns work and this that (laughs) you know just every little thing so we did uh videos and uh they were able to go into the files based you know virtually right and so um and they have access to our data database. We work through a system called Power DMS. Okay. So we give them access so that they could see the policies right. um that we say meet this standard and they could see the different proofs. Um and so like I said, we had no major issues. We had four corrections, four minor corrections that we had to do, and it was just some wording in the policies, but no major Not issues. Bad. Mm-hmm. Let me just take a quick minute and uh, let our listeners know you are listening to The Break Room. I'm Melissa Whistle, Communications Director for the City of St. Augustine. And this week we are learning about the accreditation process from Jennifer Smalls, the St. Augustine Police Department's accreditation manager. So you were just now talking about um, four um, errors or four corrections to be made. What is the... How many things are there that that so we have to... the standards, there's mm-hmm. a total of 245 standards. Oh, my goodness. That um, you have to meet. Um, for us, we had to meet 195 of those standards because um, I think it was like 46 of them were not applicable to us. Okay. So by that, I mean, like, we don't have a K-9 unit, so right. we wouldn't have to uh, respond to that. We don't... Uh, manage the courtrooms, the courthouse, so we don't have to respond to that. And we don't have a jail. Okay. So 46 items were not applicable to us. Um, so we had 199 that we had to make. Wow. 120 of those were mandatory. And then 79 of those were non-mandatory. So you have to meet all of the mandatory standards. The other others, uh, non-mandatory, you can elect out of 20%. Oh, wow. Um, we didn't elect out of any. 
of them. We went for all one ninety nine, and we were compliant with all one ninety nine, and only four little writing, four little, little technicalities. Right. That is impressive. Well, congratulations! Thank you. That's Thank you. that's well, quite an accomplishment. Really, um, a team effort. Um, like I said, when I came in, they were excited about the process. The guys were ready to go. And, um, you know, I did training to let them know what accreditation is, what it's not, what to expect when the um, team come in. And everybody was really cooperative and everybody really worked hard for um, this accreditation. 199 things to have to be accountable for. That's tedious. Yeah. No wonder why it takes two years. (laughs) But now, so now that we're accredited, that's a gold star for us, but you, right. th- your job doesn't stop there. Now no. you maintain and we have to keep this so, going. Right. Every three years we'll go through this process. So um, I'm in year one now, Okay. Um, just building files. Uh, we may do some policy tweaks here and there. And, you know, as the state laws change, of course, we may have to update our policies according to state laws or federal laws or whatever mm-hmm. is happening. But so we'll just make sure that we're keeping up with uh, changes in the field and making sure we're staying abreast and we're making the necessary changes for the department. And when we just to go back a second, I in congratulating you on this achievement, it was a big deal. You went down to Orlando. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe you told me earlier the city manager and the mayor went. The city manager and the mayor came down um, to Orlando. So what happens in Orlando is um, normally you go before a a committee. Um, They will have uh, somebody, a couple of people from CFA will be over your committee, um, and your team leader will present um, what they found at your agency. Only time that you really have to speak in that committee is if you have some compliance issues. Um, we did not have any compliance issues, so we were just there in the committee just in case they had some questions for us or they wanted to say something to Chief Fox. But then you have the big meeting, and that's when um, you go before the whole board of commissioners and they're, they present their findings and they will vote whether to accreditate you or not. So. Um, most of the time before you get to the conference, you already know because you know what the team is going to recommend for you. And so, um, like I said, we had no issues. They asked, said a few things to Chief Fox. He made, but like I said, he was on his way out. He was, uh, he was he countdown was so, days. <laughs> <laughs> and but so, quite, a, um, quite a crowning moment for right, him though, too, f- right, to, to, to finish leave, up. Right. That's wonderful. And we, I know that we're very proud as a city. Very proud of the department and couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, so. so we're uh, we're glad to have you and to keep us on track and to keep us moving for the next accreditation. Chief Michaud, she's yeah, on board. She's yeah. there. She was a big part of the team. She was a big part of the team. Uh, we were laughing yesterday because we're both Jennifers. Right. <laughs> but we are the opposite. She is, let's get it done now. And I'm kind of a procrastinator. I kind of <laughs> wait. Right. You know, we got time. We'll we get got there. time. Yeah. We got time. So it was driving her crazy. But um, she is she's good. She's a great person to work for and to work with. So I'm excited. Um, And I know we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Well, it sounds like we are in very capable hands. Yeah. Well, if there's anything else you ever want to talk about with us and tell us about accreditation, we'll be happy to have you come back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Good. Excellent. Well, and welcome aboard. Thank you. If you missed any part of this broadcast and want to go back and listen from the beginning, or if you'd like to hear any of our past interviews, you can find us on the web at citystainogradio.com. We want to keep you informed about what's happening in and around the city, and most importantly, that you hear it here from the people doing the work and making it happen every day. Remember that in order to stay connected with the city, you need to be connected. You can like us and follow us on any of our social media platforms. You'll find the city on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City St. Aug. And you'll find the police department also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at St. Aug PD. Thanks again for tuning in. Until next time. You've been listening to The Break Room, a weekly program addressing projects and programs offered by the city of St. Augustine. Join us each week as the city's communications director, Melissa Whistle, has in-depth conversations with the people who make our town work to meet the needs of our community. The Break Room is produced by communications specialist for the city of St. Augustine, Cindy Walker. See you at this time next week for another edition of The Break Room.